Actually, before I begin, I, uh, the, the, the lesson from Acts today reminded me of a very powerful day in my ministry that happened when I was a young pup back in Fortuna, California. And I got a call one day to go to the hospital to visit a woman who was dying of cancer. And I didn't know who she was, and she didn't know who I was. It's just the hospital switchboard called me. And, and, and so I went there and walked into the room, and there was a man and his wife, and she was uh, very ill, very ill. And she wanted some hope. And so I shared the gospel with her. And I shared uh, all that I knew at that time to be compassionate, and I'll never forget what she said. She goes, here's, here's what I want from you. I've never been baptized. Will you baptize me? She was in her, in her uh, late 70s, almost 80. And, uh, and that, the, the lesson that we heard today, who should prevent anyone to be baptized, from being baptized? You know, the disciples were the baptizing us guys that have ever, you know, Jesus said, go into the world and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Last week we had Philip and on the, on the a chariot with the uh, Ethiopian eunuch, and the guy said, I want to be baptized, and they looked over and saw us straight, and they baptized him, and today Peter baptized the entire family of Cornelius a Gentile, that was the reaching out of Gentiles. And I'll never forget, I said, I guess you don't have to be trained, you, want, you love Jesus. And uh, I said, I don't have any water. And she took the cap off the top of her drinking glass, you know, the styrofoam cups. And we baptized her in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit while she lay there in bed from the styrofoam cup. And her husband is standing behind me weeping. And he said, I haven't been baptized either. But we had a great baptism party reminding me of Cornelius and his family. And uh, I just had to share that with you because it was a very special moment in my ministry. Of, uh, uh, of many years ago. But today we're going to talk about the gospel of Christ and that verse. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide, I love. Abide in my love. And first, before we get to there, I want to wish everybody that is an appropriate Happy Mother's Day. It is Mother's Day, and, and if you were here, I hope... John, that was a beautiful piece uh, that you showed before we started about Mother's Day because love, oftentimes we struggle with that and what it means to love and how we love. And, and it, it, since the fall uh, of, of humankind in the garden, love was broken and, we, and, and strife began, broke out upon the earth. And I think the most natural form of love that is in us is the love of a mother for her children. And uh, now, not all mothers do it differently, but I would be stretched to find a mother that wouldn't sacrifice for her child and give up a day or a night or give up a, uh, a you know, financially to their children or, or give up time or give up time for prayer or just be a mother bear and protect your kids. I don't, you know, again, it's not universal, but that's a natural love built into us, and I just want to honor mothers because you're very special and you have a real role in showing what love should look like from God. So happy Mother's Day. Even to my mother, I remember my mother who was not warm and fuzzy so much, uh, but she loved me, I know. She never told me that she loved me because she would pray for me. And uh, she really cared for me. So happy Mother's Day to you all. And again, that love is a love built in from Christ. Built in from God alone. Now last week we heard the gospel lesson of the abiding in the vine, abide in the vine, as the branches cannot bear fruit by themselves, they can only bear fruit as they are grafted into and abiding in the vine. And that, that Jesus then later said that, I am the vine, you are the branches, my Father is the vine dresser. 
And what did that mean? And I believe that was the 14th chapter of John's Gospel. In the 15th chapter of John's Gospel, he further defines what it means to abide in the vine. And it's abiding in his love. You see, the vine can only be understood in light of its definition as abiding in the love of God. Because of what flows from God in nourishment and a vine as we picture it, what flows from God is strength, what flows from God into us as the virtue of living and, and all of that is the lo very love of God. And, and it is there to provide fruitful life of love. And so Jesus is speaking again, and I'm going to mix these metaphors again today. Abiding in the vine means abiding in the love of God. Abiding in the love of God. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Now on the surface, that may sound like there's a condition for us to get love from God, and that's abiding in If we just obey and be good kids, then we will abide in God's love and Jesus will love us. But that's not what this is saying. This is not saying, I love you only if you do what I say. But it's saying, here is the way for my love to flow through you. And I'll talk about this in just a minute. By keeping what I've commanded you to do will assure you that you as the branch are connected and grafted into the vine and, you're, and that graft grows strong and my love flows through you. If you keep what I say, and when we don't, then we break away from Christ's flow of love in us. So abiding by, uh, when we abide in the commandments of Jesus, we are abiding into the very way in which we keep connected to him. Because he teaches us through his commandments how to abide in him. Again, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. As you abide in my love, then that love flows out of me so that you can love one another. And that's where we're getting to what my theme is going to be today, is really how do we maintain good relationships in this world? I think we all strive to have good, positive, loving, joy-producing relationships in this world. Jesus said those relationships first flow out of our relationship with God, as he gave the summary of the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. I remember Clay Lawson once said, doesn't that form the love of God and the love of neighbor into the very symbol of our faith? And, and that's really the purpose of God. Jesus said, all the law, all the prophets, all that I have taught, all the commands lead to us Doing those two things. How do we maintain a relationship with God so that we can retain a loving relationship with one another? That's his will for the world. And who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? He's talking to you and me and the church. How many of you, you know, some of you do real estate, right? Location, location, location is really important. When we understand the scriptures, context, context, context is important, is important. And it's important to realize that this context, he's not speaking to the world out there that doesn't know him, and it's not connected to him. He's speaking to those who have already been grafted into his vine. And that's you and me. He's speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to those who with whom God has brought into his family. How do we know this? Everyone who believes in Jesus, the Christ, has been born of God. And so we're part of God's family. He's talking to us. And that everyone who loves the parent loves the child. We, we are to love each other. And, and that is what's more natural to God. It's the natural flow of things. And by this, we know that we're the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. So all of this is giving us this, this idea of the flow of ability to maintain positive relationships as the flow of the love of God into us, in which we then 
learn what it means to love one another. What does it mean to love one another? I saw it, it's great. I, I, I got to go to a convention this week, and uh, convention was out in Turf Valley, and the road, I don't know if you've been down the road, Marysville Road, it's a beautiful drive out there. And I got, I got caught behind one of those cars that had all kinds of bumper stickers on the back. And, and you probably have seen them. The bumper sticker, one of them said, coexist and had all the religious symbols. And another one said tolerance and it had all the religious symbols. And the one that really stuck out with, to me, it just said, just be nice. <laughs> and, and those are virtues, those are good. We should and be nice, right? I mean, it's, it's, Jesus says kindness is, a, is one of the fruits of the Spirit. The scripture tells us that. But then, it, this, and we should be able to coexist in this world. And we should be able to tolerate one another. But those are, again, as good a virtue as they are, they, they are not what Jesus is talking about when he's saying to love one another. He is not saying, just be nice to one another. He is not saying, just learn to get along. You know, can we just get along? He's learning, he's teaching us the godly, agape love that Jason spoke about last week. The love that is more interested in others than self, that does not demand its own way, love that is self-sacrificing, and love that is the kind of love that gives up his life for his friend. So we're talking about the virtue that Jesus really wants us to do. Everyone who believes in the Son has been born and has that, again, the ability to be grafted into the sap that comes out of the vine into us so that we can produce that kind of love and that kind of so what I want to talk about, what is the key to maintaining relationships of this world? This world is, is wrought with broken relationships, whether it be in families, whether it be amongst friends, whether it be that you and your boss don't get along in your job, or, you know, the police versus the people, or broken relationship and trust, the broken relationships in our communities, in our churches. How can we maintain positive relationships which produce joy, which is the product of good, loving relationships. And why do I say that? It's because we are built as people, as humans, in the image of God, right? What does it mean? It means that we are built for relationship. That's a whole center of our theology, that the Trinity of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit coexisted in perfect relationship before the world was made and that God created the world and created the pinnacle of creation, us, so that we could be in relationship, love with him, and love with one another. And that brings joy. If, you, if, you're, if you're losing out on that joy, you're losing out on the life that God wants for us and you and me. I said these things to you so that my joy, Jesus was going to the cross the next day. This was the night in which he was betrayed. This was the night he knew he was going to be brutalized the next day and go to the cross. And he said, I give you these things so my joy may be in you and your joy may be in you. And so the key in the ability is what Jesus is saying here. Our ability to love only can flow true love. Not the kind of love that we just be nice. But true love for one another is not a natural thing for us in this fallen state we're in. It is a natural thing for us in the re regenerated state that we're in when we're grafted into Christ. And he wants us to live into that. Our ability to love can only then flow from God's love. As the Father has loved me, Jesus said, so have I loved you, abide in my love. Even his love, as the Father has loved me, I've loved you. Abide in that. Abide in that. Abide in that. And what does it mean to abide? But live into it. And we forget how much God passionately loves each one of us as his child. Even when life is tough. And so the key to lasting and good solid relationships, whether it be your family and your job, is to abide in the love first that God puts upon you. He has chosen you to bear good fruit. And know that God loves you, not just here, you know, okay, 
Know because you know because you know, and you, you know that the God who created you loves you in every, every single way possible. And he's chosen you. I, the bishop told the story yesterday at the convention that I have to share with you. It's about this kind of love. And it was about, he, when he was going through a very difficult time, of course, the first few months of this year for the diocese and for him, it been horrible. And he was, he was, he was confessing that he is, he is at the lowest point in his entire ministry. And then he said uh, he has been getting love and grace and help from his, from his spiritual companions. And one of them went to a, 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 a vineyard in Napa. It was a small vineyard owned by what uh, his friend said was kind of an eccentric woman. And she said, do you know what I do for my vineyard? And she goes, I touch every grape in my vineyard at least seven times before it's picked. Can you imagine? What a picture, though, of this woman taking care, I don't know how big the vineyard was, but go through up and down every one of her, her uh, uh, rows of, of grapes, touching all the grapes, checking them out, making sure. Now, I don't know if she's a Christian, probably not, but she has a point of care. And I think about God in us, in God's vineyard, who comes to touch our lives more than seven times before, you know. But the care that she must have had for those, those grapes. Then she went on to talk about her care for the grapes. But the thing that really struck me was, because sometimes we don't realize God loves us because we go through tough times. But she said, the one key is that I, I never give the plants all the water that they want. You know, she said that those grapevines will suck up water as much as you give them. And then all you get is big, bushy branches that, they, that, that doesn't go into the fruit. And she says, what I do is I give them a, enough water that they need. And then the things, uh, then what happens is the stress that's put on the plant causes them to dig their roots deeper and deeper and deeper to find the springs of living water under the soil. Is that a metaphor or not? When we go through struggles, we should or hopefully will dig deeper into our desire to find God. And then she said, and then the branches maintain their strength, the roots are stronger than ever, and the fruit. And she, they even Sometimes, during difficult times, God is causing us to grow deeper into Him. Now there's where the choice comes in, because we have a choice to either drive deeper into Him, or we have a choice to break ourselves away from the branch. Go find another branch that will give us all that we want. And how then do, do we stay connected? We stay connected, as Jason told us last week, through prayer and getting into the Word and serving others. We learned that many of you have taken experiencing God by joining God in His work. We experience God in holy ways. By giving service to others, by pouring our lives out for others, we are doing what God says. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments and, and abide in me. And what are Jesus' commandments? Think about it. How do we abide in a positive, good relationship with each other? Forgive as I have forgiven you. How much does he talk about forgiving those who have offended you? Letting go of the, of the resentments that are hanging on inside. Nothing will break a relationship more than unforgiveness. That's a command that you forgive one another. He commands us to walk humbly before him and walk humbly before each other. What does that mean? How many times in the scripture do we find the, the word of God saying, count others and their needs more important than yours? And yet we demand our own way. When we get stubborn, relationships break. You want to maintain good relationships. This is a hard life. Or a, it's not easy. And he talks about being kind to one another. He talks about gentleness. He talks about compassion. He talks about selflessness, agape. He talks about these are the commands of Christ. Follow my commandments, you'll abide in my love. 
just as I follow the commandments of my Father and sacrifice my life. Jason Poling again last week said 1 Corinthians 13, which is at most weddings, is really not a marriage uh, a piece of, uh, of scripture. It's to the church. And so what did he say that that love looks like? He said love, that my love is patient. Patient. Now patience doesn't mean, you know, 60 seconds I'll have patience and now I'll go forward. Patience allows God to work in, other, in others' lives. Oftentimes, when people disappoint us or when people fail, the patience of God is with them. And Oswald Chambers always says, oh, we run to the rescue and we want to correct the situation. But sometimes God has a bit of deeper purpose in that. You have to have patience. Kind. Love is kind. It does not envy. It's not jealous of others. It does not boast. It does not have pride as the center. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. And how many of us have that book of wrongs in our, in our, uh, you know, in our journal? It, it lets go. You know, Frozen. Can everybody sing the song? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Keeps no record of wrongs. It does not delight in wrong for others and say, Oh, good, you got them, God. But it rejoices in the truth of God's love for others. Can you do that? That's the commandments of God. If we do those things, we stay connected. And then that, that's the kind of love that God wants to flow through us. Now, what will destroy relationships? Here's the list. Impatience, unkind words. Action or actions, jealousy will, 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 will you know, ruin a relationship. Pride, selfishness, anger, unforgiveness, resentment, grumbling, gossip, judgments, and you can add to that list. If you have those and you don't want them anymore, and you want your relationships to thrive, what do we do? Can we just say quit? You know, I've, <clears throat> I've done some marriage counseling. Uh, when, when I've seen married couples who have no hope, I just go, oh God, this is not going to work. And the worst example of, of advice that I could give as a counselor would say, oh, just love one another. And they'd look at me and go, yeah, right. They're, they're actually back to back sitting in front of my desk. But... So there's got to be a way in which we can make those decisions with God's help. And like the branches attached to the vine, we need to be pruned sometimes, cultivated and nurtured. We have to allow God to remove and to strengthen us and struggle so that we can learn. But, but even more so, looking forward to Pentecost, which is only two weeks away, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. And so if you want to change, if you want to love, if you want to forgive, and you can't, then, then here's the key. Yield to the Spirit of God living in you. Let God do it in you. That's what the Spirit is for, to live in us, to carry out, because we don't have the power to do it on our own, the very work of God. And that's the decision. You see, agape love is a decision to love, even when we don't feel like it. It is not a, a feeling. Agape love is not an emotion. Agape love is not if you just do what I say, God be love is a choice to allow the Spirit of God, here we go, the love of God to flow through Jesus Christ, to flow into us as the branches of the fruit, and then to go out of us to produce the fruit that He calls, yielding to the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I, I read it this way in one place, a holy pipeline of love. It connects us to the very Trinity of God. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe as Christians that that Trinity of life existed before the world and was a perfect harmony of love. And so we connect into that perfect harmony of love as the Father loves the Son and the Son loves us and we love one another and it completes the circle of life. And it will bring us joy. So, love one another. And, and, and if you can't, ask God to. 
It's for your benefit. It is for society's benefit. It is for the church's benefit. It is for God's glory. It is what we're here for. And, and yeah, it's not easy. But it's attainable because we are grafted into the very love of God. So carry this with you if you can remember a memory verse this week. As the Father has loved me, Jesus said, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And then watch for the changes that would come. Watch for the changes that will come. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.